So I was at my other job at about 8, 8 p.m. And I had just had a gut feeling they were going to drop the patch notes today instead of on a Wednesday like they normally do. And lo and behold, I was correct. So when I got home, I was like, maybe I should stream. Maybe I should. Let's take a look at the size of the patch notes because I thought it was going to be fucking huge, right? Maybe I was too late, but I did a quick skim, guys, and it was not looking that big, right? Um, as the Steam charts will show you, people have been needing a reason to play the game, and I thought they were going to, you know, hit us with a biggie like they did in the first season of the game in the middle of the year or season. Yeah, this is like this would be like the, the halfway point, right, if this was when the game had come out. So... I thought we we're going to get a super big patch, and that did not seem to be the case. Now, that doesn't mean that the changes won't be important, so let's go ahead and get started. But we're going to be able to knock this out pretty quickly. So, as of this Thursday, we will officially have crossplay as a feature. Let me see. Now, the question is, you can turn, yeah, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, and you can see exactly what console they're playing on. But can you see the ping? Can you see the ping? All right, added functions to report the players. Okay, added a mute functions. Okay, that's pretty neat. Some of those names are pretty cringe. Can I see their ping? You can now see how many players in the same room as you during, okay. There it is, boys. When entering, when entering a match, an icon shows the connection strength with opponent on the confirmation screen before the match. This is huge. As I will say time and time again, no one wants to like play upwards of like 150 ping and you never knew before and you kind of had to guess. It was a bit of a mix up, especially when people's names weren't in English. You know, it's kind of a toss up if they were actually in the States or not. Anyway, fix some bugs, fix some bugs. To make it easier to match the players of the same skill level, the rule preventing players from falling below a certain floor even after repeated losses based on a, has been at ease. There have been no changes. Okay. Skipping, this is huge. Uh, I think you're going to get kicked out of matches, though. Players can now continue to rematch up to three matches. Even if they are signed, floor changes as before the players will return to a room if, if either player quits. Okay, this is good. Option to view player match from the save. Okay, avatar, blah, 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 blah. Okay. <sighs> Please, give me a reason. Give me, get light a fire, light a fire under my belly. Okay. Here we go. Changes to game mechanics. These changes address the issue of difficulty for the defender to launch a counteroffensive due to the attacker remaining at an advantage for an extended time. Yeah, absolutely. So ever since the game has come out, like defense is uh, something that is like always been a part of Guilty Gear. FD, uh, instant block, you know, standing block versus crouching block. Those are all been like part of the game. And in older Guilty Gear games, you had other things like Blitz Shield and um, Dead Angle, right? You had things on top of that. So you had passive in active defensive mechanics and you, with a blend of those two things you could pretty much deconstruct any offense and the offender had to play this extra mini game on top of their offense or like their, their offense had to be a lot more dynamic because uh especially things like dead angle and blitz shield are not there the opponent doesn't really have to do anything in particular they just have to do they just have to put their resources in better spots they just have to take a make a different choice not necessarily structure anything differently um, and the issue is even if you do manage to crawl out, like your risk gauge will be way, way, way too high and the meter you will lose be on being on the defensive. Um, even just doing things like retreating is just like, it was just not good and it definitely wasn't evenly distributed. So let's hope they fix that. Right. The tension gauge now increases with the more, the higher your character's risk. Yeah. The tension gauge now increases more, the higher. Okay. That was weird. More, the higher your character's risk level. They, this increases the reward for successfully making out of the dangerous situation. Yeah, so there have been many times when you, like, get out of the corner and then you, like, neutral happens, but you're still in an unfavorable state for some reason. And then you get, like, hit and it was like, well, shit, what was the point of that? That's going to fix this. Um, doesn't come up too often, but it definitely comes up often enough for them to address. I really, really like this change. Tension gauge gain rate for the attacker no longer increases when the opponent blocks attack while the risk level is at max. Now, this is another huge thing, right? Because the thing going on right now is, you know, you get your little positive bonus and you push them into the corner and then you're steady getting 50% bar while you build up their risk gauge. They eventually won't be able to block something because they'll do some gross RC mix and then they're going to lose all of their goddamn health. And I'm guessing this is going to, um, even if the positive bonus is in effect, it will not. They maybe won't be able to build as much gauge 
as they could previously so this is really really nice this may save again some extreme situations because again it's guilty gear so like you should usually usually get steamroll when you're in somebody's win con but the events the offense leading up to it usually isn't that oppressive it's this is kind of disgusting um i've seen some like 10 second long sequences where like the best option for the opponent is just to block and it's just stupid <laughs> it's like there's no reason for either person to stop doing what they're doing and it can't it's not it's there's no other option to make this alleviates some of the burden on the defender and it i guess this will make things different yeah this change is intended to alleviate the difficulty we're in switching from defense to offense I, okay all right that's they're targeting i don't see why the people still wouldn't do what they were doing they just they would just do it in sh they, like instead of a 10 second sequence with them having positive bonus it'd just be a five second sequence anyway the rate of the risk level depletion over time is now faster this is really really good um Okay, so what I'm already reading into is less damage overall is going to be happening and less meter. The offender won't have a gross meter advantage, but I still want to see a scenario where the defender is getting some kind of reward or getting something on defense for doing their job correctly other than, oh yeah, I won't explode. I want to see something. Let's see if they give us a meter. Previously, the defender was still being a, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Risk level now resets when Psych Burst is activated, not when a successful Psych Burst is achieved, though. That's very important. They did not say that. Right. So if you burst, it resets the risk level. Even if you get baited, you may not explode. And that's actually a really, really good thing, because if this is a different, you may think that doesn't matter. But remember, in Strive, the wall breaks. So like if they bait my burst and they continue to punish that, the wall is going to break. And I might not explode because I don't have 100% risk. Again, so in these these snowball situations, it's a little bit less snowbally. I don't know if it's going to, I'm getting the feeling we're just going to bleed slower or we're going to, we're just going to bleed slower. Let's keep going though. This change helps prevent the use of psych bursts from becoming overly limited by giving it the role of a clear reset. Okay. Changes affecting all characters. As a general rule, the, everyone's 6P, their forward points, the height of the hurt box when it comes out is now the same for all characters. Woo, go Lewis buff. Woo. The height of the hurt box was the same for all characters. At the lowest point of the attack, but the hurt box height during startup varied between characters. Okay, so they're just normalizing this universal tool. You really love to see it. I think the hit boxes will be the same though. Um, okay, yeah, this is so that if I tell you, hey, just 6P it, that applies to every character in the game. That's really, really nice. Quality of life for everybody. Um, some characters are going to benefit from that more than others. Anyway, special moves with retreating movement. I'm looking at you, Happy Chaos. These moves can now cause the tension. Yeah, these moves can now cause the tension balance to deplete and the negative value to increase. Beautiful. Um, this change was coming. Uh, it's just ridiculous that fucking Happy Cows has a great backdash and he has two moves that have him retreat. Like they're really, really good. And there's no consequence for it in the game. That's supposed to reward, um, reward like interaction. And again, these characters aren't designed to be interacting from full screen like the way Happy Chaos can. So. Base damage scaling. Base damage scaling has been added to attacks that it did not have. That did not have it previously, with the exception of certain moves. If we don't know these exact list of moves, this doesn't really mean anything. This addresses the problems of some characters having moves used in similar ways, but with varying reward, depending on whether or not the move had base damage scaling. Such moves, such as close slash, do not have the same. Do not have base damage scaling, meaning they can lead to major damage, just as before. Yes, close slash is the god button. That's what you want to hit. Okay. So I think this is just saying what we just read um, and a little bit of terminology. This didn't make any sense. And I don't think we need to give a shit about that. So I'm just going to keep going. Tension balance, negative value. Okay, so this is where it got a little juicy. Again, I didn't deep read into any of these. I just kind of skimmed. But we're going to start from the top. And let's see if this actually is going to affect the game in any way. Starting with Soul. The extended range of standing heavy slash no, standing heavy slash makes his offense using far slash even more potent. While it is now more challenging for him to get huge rewards for mid range, the changes to gun flame make him better at poking for mid range. Okay, so gun flame is gonna do what now? So gun flame is gonna come out faster. It's gonna have less active frames. Increase the move speed of the projectile, so it's going to operate more like a Hadouken. Interesting. Mm, forward slash no longer launches the opponent on ground at counter hit. Ugh, that's a that's a huge hit to his damage. Um, 
but the hitbox on Stan Heavy is better. I like it, but at the same time, I don't know what we're doing. Again, that, that was very small. That doesn't really change much of anything. I think he would just do forward slash and then do Volcanic Viper. Instead of doing forward slash, you know, like legs. But his damage is definitely going to go down. But whatever the hell, Gunflame seems interesting. We're, we're, we're going to take a look at that. I guess we'll see what that feels like when the time comes. In addition to the Guard Crush effect to Sacred Edge during Shock State and Dragon Install, he is allowed to maintain his offense regardless of range. Now, this is huge. Keep adding things to stun state. So if you're already, if you have someone in the state, you can now guard crush them if you go in the dragon install. That's actually really, really cool. Fudo Arc now creates less distant with the opponent on ground and hit, making it easier for Kai to continue his offensive. So in the last patch, they wanted us to do Fudo Arc into like 5H or 6H, but those were really restricted to the corner because of the pushback on the move on hit. Now, with that being less of a less knockback, we are going to be able to just pick up with 5H or 6H if we're near the corner. So that's really, really nice. A um, little bit of a damage boost here and giving more utility to both of his like underutilized overdrives. This is really, really nice. Expanded, wait, they buff. <laughs> they buffed 5H again. I don't know if they, no, they haven't, no, they haven't really, dude, this is, wow. This is wow, 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 okay. No, no, yeah, food. No, I thought, okay. Take back, boys. Take back, take back, take back, take back, take back. I thought food arc. No, no, I think I wasn't all wrong there. I was getting this up, mixed up with Dire Clock. Dire Clock remains the same. Food arc. It just makes his combo routes that are already existing more existent. And it may help in some situation. Either way, more combo ability seems to be the case. He didn't. <laughs> this up here is out of control. This damn heavy slash? No. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking with that. Moving on, May. Horizontal Dolphin now has less recovery, so it was negative five before when it connects. Oh, horizontal. So both the slash and the heavy slash version. So the heavy slash version version was plus five, and the slash version was minus five. And with less recovery, she's gonna be allowed to escape from more situations. It looks like they're gonna be doing something to her forward jump as well, so it's gonna get really, really gross, really, really fast. Also, her slide, her 3K, gets more active frames and less recovery. Interesting. If she did space that properly, she was able to get away with it. Now it seems like you're definitely going to be able to get away with it. And now her jumping 2HS in the air. Wow. Because we going to have a counter effect. Okay. So, yeah, they're kind of picking on, like, this character is quite linear. Um, and, like, this is, I mean, she can be quite boring to play and watch. She's damn all, always effective, though, right? Slash has been letting us know. Still an effective character regardless. But um, you'll love to see it. This is really, really good. This is going to open up her play at intermediate and low level and i'm sure it's last will come up with some gross shit hitbox now remains after the projectile hits the ground oh no this this may be really gross okay um uh, may just being may still a good character no reason not to play this character so the ability to cancel stand punch and crouch punch and other pokes during the recovery on hero block makes his strength more prominent yeah so when i was doing i was learning axel for the combo video we dropped recently it was kind of weird because his punches you have to like you can't really confirm them. You just have to do them. Um, but with a higher cancel, special cancel window, this should help his combo ability and open up some uh, some interesting situations in neutral, right? Because if he pressed punch before and you didn't see the special come out, you can just kind of run at him. Now you have to kind of sit there and wait. Will he do snail? Will he do rainwater? You don't really know. Again, Axel has continued to get things. No one really plays this guy. Um, I rarely see any Axels on the tower. Maybe it's their time. Because it looks like everyone's damage will be going down overall. So maybe his damage will be in the right spot for people to be more interested in him. I don't know. But I guess the, the, the I mean, the real thing was, right? The, the real problem was why play Axel when you can play Happy Chaos? So that's into that. Snail, increased knockback. Okay, that's good for him. Increased blowback when used as part of a combo. non launches the opponent Howard. Higher with decreased horizontal added tumble effect. What the fuck? Okay, we're going to have to investigate that. Now draws opponent in on hit or, in, or block. Now decreases tension balance. Oh, he can't keep spamming rainwater. Ugh. Ugh. That's good for happy cows. I didn't think they were going to hit. We'll see how that feels. We'll see how that feels. Still a good character. No one's going to fucking play him, though. Alpha Blade Horizon now sends the opponent flying towards Chip, making it easier to land more hits. So uh, what they did, right? They, get rid of, they got rid of Chip's verticality over the course of Season 1, but in Season 2... 
his ability to convert off any fucking hit into meaningful damage it just gets better and looks like they want to continue that trend here forward heavy slash will now put the opponent in a crouching state on grounded hit yikes i'm sure there's going to be some gross shit going on there ship mains let me know what the hell this is about alpha blade horizontal now launches opponent higher with increased horizontal knockback increased horizontal blowback distance reduced attack startup okay so just something about his alpha blade horizontal so they didn't increase the decrease the recovery and they didn't decrease the startup interesting okay so just more combo ability um more combo ability reduced attack startup on Sinshu means it's going to be even more threatening overhead though and it was already pretty threatening before so i don't chip is slowly becoming the messiah anywho potemkin so uh, i've been watching i've been hearing everyone say this guy's not very good i, I gotta i'm asking for it let's see the additional range for his pokes improve his mid-range game his pokes have all been trash as we detail in the how to be potemkin video hammerfall allows for more aggressive approaches at the time potemkin was withstand attacks is now faster at close range, the faster startup of the flick makes it harder for the opponent to escape by jumping, meaning his core mix-up is more potent. And FDB is the flick, absolutely. Okay, so the decrease the startup of that, interesting. Now, what's really gross here is Hammerfall getting the armor sooner. That's going to be quite interesting. And it looks like they traded it. Let's talk about it. So it's Mega Fist backwards. Again, so any move that retreats you now, your tension gauge will be affected negatively. I really like this. I also like the changes to the sweep, reduced recovery. Move, that's like his only move he gets to press it. It can't be six speed. Um, maybe that won't be the case. Maybe they'll just be his, his slash will be that great after this patch, but um He needs he needs other things to do besides fucking sweep and like pray. <laughs> Sweet pray and let them make a mistake first. It looks like they're not going to give him that faster jab like we want it. So, um, I am so sorry. Anyone who plays Potemkin, I guess you still going to have to die on defense. I don't, that that's his primary issue. He's a strike throw character that loses to strike throw. It's fucking weird, but it makes sense. I guess Potemkin may be uh, not top tier for another game. Faust. The increased knockback on standing heavy slash and sweep allow Faust to create distance from the opponent, meaning he can use what could this be? Yeah, so in the last patch they gave his normals, like, they were, they're good now. His, all his normals, command normals, fantastic shape. They're in fantastic shape. They helped him out with his damage across the board. Now it's time to tell, and I guess they want me to lean, we want, they want us to lean more into throwing the item. Also, the reduced startup for Mix 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 makes it easier to use in combos. Yes, sir. Link the Faust combo video right there. Y'all should see it on screen. Also make it harder for the opponents to interrupt when using block strings. I don't know why you would use mix 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 in block strings, but hey, I, I guess I go right ahead, do what you gotta do. Increase knockback on stand heavy slash. Jesus fuck sweep. Decreased okay, reduce lower. Mm, what is this? Scarecrow. Reduce lower hurt box. Interesting. Alright, uh sped up timing of the input buffer window. Mm, I'm not sure what the wording means by that. Crouch punch reduced upper hurt box. Yikes, that crouch punch just got a buff. I love how they did not want to talk about that shit. Increase okay, so they just want him to go full on throw the fucking item. Hey, that's what he's that's what he's about in this game now. Melia, we got Melia next. She needs help. Please. Anything. The increased attack level of Tandem Top makes it less risky for Mila to use in strings and during neutral. It's like negative 21 on block. There's there's no attack level you could increase it. Still, she's still gonna explode. Yeah, uh, I mean we can look at it real quick. I'm pretty confident this is a grief. Oh, it's not negative 21. It's only negative 14. Okay. So if they increase his attack level by one, it'll probably be like negative 11. If he spaces it probably, it probably now makes it unblockable. I mean, unpunishable. If she spaces it right, she doesn't have too much run momentum. This look, this is looking really good. That's looking, ooh. this is looking really good. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's take a look at these other changes. Sin Heavy Slash now bounces opponent higher with decreased horizontal knockback. Or Heavy Slash, decreased attack startup. Okay, I wonder if now she can go like 5k, 6h, and it's going to just naturally frame trap now. Kind of like uh, most of the other characters. 
sweep reduce recovery now this is huge because this move is fucking super unsafe most of her specials though right so the issue is she only has one special that d didn't incur like any immediate risk uh which was um what was it where she pokes you with the hair i don't know how i forgot the name of it but um the issue with that right is there's still, gonna, there's still sometimes going to be a gap between the last normal she did and that special move sometimes you just want to stop at sweep man you want to stop at sweep and i think it's negative 12 as of now let's go ahead and get that confirmation negative 11 yeah like why am i dying for this kai's not dying when he does 2k 2d why the fuck am i dying for that it's so stupid anyway ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway frame advantage and distance okay so they're normalizing your throw turbo fall can now you can go into the corner and tandem top has a higher attack level which probably means it'll do more damage probably gets more probably get more okay and everything so it's really really good um her main issue is still risk versus reward didn't help her neutral so i guess if you're playing milia i guess I guess you just gotta work still just as hard. Melia can now move. Mm. I like the 6k change, but like that's not why you're getting hit. The the her 5k 6h being like a natural frame trap to five frame jab may be really, really nice. The change to sweep is really nice. If it even gets bumped down to like negative eight, she's in fucking business. In my opinion. Uh negative seven be probably perfect. Um, but this doesn't fix her issues. Not enough bang for your buck with this character. Zada one, the ability to move only Zada or only Eddie during break the law opens up new possibilities for strings. The reduced hurt box on Sun Void makes it more difficult for the opponent to interrupt it when using block strings. I'm sure, just like in how to my how to how to be Zada video, he'll, the counterplay will be relatively the same. If he does it in your face without like a proper heavy slash, then you're probably still going to be able to hit him for doing it. But they did reduce the frontal hair box. Chances are not by enough because the hit the move is clearly designed to be punished and when used in the wrong spots. But now when he goes into the floor, um, he gets more move speed. Wow. Okay, this is really as an advancing maneuver. But now you can specifically move Eddie or specifically use Zotto. That's really, really nice. Sped up the timing when Zotto pauses before the attack is active. Okay, that'll help with some routes. Okay. Um, didn't really do much. Ram. All right, top three. What you're going to do? The additional range for Crouch Heavy Slash makes it easier to go into highly damaging combos. Okay, makes her more threatening at close range. Okay, there's gotta be something they're not telling us. It doesn't make any sense. Jumping D now works better as a jump in due to the additional hitbox behind Ram. What the fuck? You mean like as a cross up? Uh, Eralamo. Or Eralamo? I don't know how to say that, but these are hurt records. Um, they, give, they were dash cancelable and they're really, really cool. They decrease the damage. Okay, so she's you're still gonna play her the same. The, the opponent can now recover after landing. Third hit, all versions. I don't know what this means. The opponent can now recover after landing. I'm guessing this... They make it a soft knockdown? Maybe they made this a soft knockdown. If they made this a soft knockdown, that's actually huge. She'll lose control then. And um, that's huge. It's actually huge. Leo, the golden boy. What are they going to do to you, my friend? The adjustments to the knockback and blowback for forward heavy kick and the increased range of his slash... Um, his slash version of his dash is dash slash. Make them more viable in combos and forming strong block strings. They're already strong. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. Sweep launching the opponent higher on hit gives Leo more of an advantage, making it easier for him to go into Okizeme. Okay, so yeah, I actually checked this recently when going over the Leo matchup. You can't 2k 2d into cross up into meaty kick, but now I'm guessing they want you to be able to do that because of the associated risk, or associated risk with sweep now. So that's really, really nice. Um, again, not, it's not, it's not really, eh, Nago. All right. Are you going to, are you going to buff or nerf you? Let's see. Nago's defenses are insane, but it looks like they are going to be, his defense will go down the higher the blood rage and blood gauge he has, but okay. Yeah. And they nerfed 2s. Wow. Wow. Okay. So Nago. He was ridiculous. His health pool was way too big. And his risk versus reward is way too skewed in his favor. And I mean, he just does too much damage off anything. It's just ridiculous. And he has too many ways to not have to pop. And he has too many ways to play post pop as well. Um, 
this is really really good that means that the good nago is still gonna beat your ass and then the, the like the intermediate nago is gonna like actually have to play the game uh but we'll see i don't know what they mean by damage scaling on hits that were not scaled before we're gonna have to see we're gonna have to see but it looks like for his back dash he's gonna get he has tension gauge will get hit not that big of a deal for him but his crowd slash getting hit is actually gonna be quite interesting quite interesting quite interesting to do i think this is the first time i think they've hit someone's like systems like their base stats nago's defense now varies with the amount of blood gauge this is very interesting 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 is he still the messiah i mean is he up there with ram i mean ram guy hit too okay i'm not seeing enough crouching heavy slash now draws the opponent in creating major changes in her combo structure her combo structures were solid i don't see why we need more Using it with Soul Puente, that's flip kick, can lead into higher reward than before. She has access to more powerful combos in the corner. So what probably happened after the Soul Puente changes, remember no, the flip kick used to be plus, now it is minus, and it's kind of fucking useless if you're not playing on console. Because <laughs> you can actually react to it on PC, and they probably saw that people aren't using that goddamn move anymore, and they were like, Jesus fuck, we need to make sure people use this move now. She now has access to more powerful combos in the corner. She definitely doesn't need more combos in the corner. Due to the new wall bounce effect off of her standing heavy slash. That's going to be fucking weird. You're going to get 5H into 5H. I already know what they want. It's going to look so gross. You're going to get fucking close slash, crouch heavy slash, wolf kick. It's going to be 5H, 5H. And it's going to be fucking disgusting. It's going to be 5H, drill. It's going to be so gross. It's going to be so gross. Um, but this is looking really, really good for her. Her issue is still, she does not have, you. she's just going to grab you 20 fucking times. One that's boring as the spectator. It's like, yo, is this character going to do anything different? It's boring for the offender and the defender. Um, it looks like they're trying to make something happen. Some may try to make some shake with the soul puente. Uh, we'll have to see. I don't think it's going to be as impactful. They didn't change the move. The move still has 30 frames of fucking startup. Who the fuck? Let me make sure, you know, I don't stare at my frame data like I used to because I definitely don't need to because they don't change shit. But let's take a look. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's not 30 frames of startup. 27 frames of startup. My bad. Wait. Yeah. 27 frames. Yeah. No one's going to hear about this. Oh. <laughs> all right let me stop <laughs> all right anyway so let me just um whew, this is really cool i hope it i hope it, I, I hope she does cool combos she still be doing the same game plan though anji standing heavy slash now launches the opponent on grounded hit jesus fuck making it possible to combo from fusion into rin jesus fuck Oh, and then go into Okisume and off of, but they also lead to better situations for him. I think fucking Anji's fine. I love everything I'm seeing. I'll give him everything. Nagiha gives Anji more of an advantage. Yeah, he did. This was kind of weird. You would get counter hit Nagiha and then like you couldn't follow up the way you would think you could. Now you probably can. Okay, that's it. Woo, I guess she can now jump cancel. Okay, now this is huge. I've been playing Eno, or I was playing Eno for a time, and I was like, bro, why can I not jump out of, why can I not block or jump out of hover dash? What the fuck? Now you can. This allows her to move a greater distance for it than with the standard jump. Combined with the reduction of Soul Tree's, okay, so Soul Tree performance has been not a good move. It's just not a good move. Um, yes, it has its advantages, but like, it's not a good move. <laughs> it's not a good move. In a lot of situations that you would want to use it, it's not smart to use it. She now has a greater arsenal. Okay, so this is actually, this is the first big thing i've seen and she kind of needs it because you know how people are screaming about heavy stroke i don't think it's that big a deal but anyway being able to move like this in the air is going to be huge let's take a look startup can now be jump canceled that's gross sped up time when eno can block yeah i told you you can't fucking... i don't know why you could not block with her before the timing is now the same as when canceling the startup of a jump attack okay fix the bug where but okay the motion would all be interrupted if a backwards has been input okay Ooh, interesting. Interesting. I like that. Okay. anti depressant scale added proximity requirement for the attack to connect. Expanded attack hitbox on hit or block. Okay. 
no is bigger all right here we go stroke reduce her box before movement begins the upper hurt box of this attack steadily increases Hello. oh my bad good band by the way the reduced hurt box before moving begins the upper hurt box of the attack steadily decreases as the move comes out as before this change reduces the hurt box for a set when it was extended too high okay well if you thought stroke was annoying before i guess it's more more annoying now the thing about sultry bro is that like even if you charged it and they blocked it she just lost her turn it was so silly i think that will be happening again but it won't be like you insta lose maybe she gets to at least backdash right starts an rps there's no rps um or not as much of an rps as a move of this caliber would make you think or other moves similar to it would allow for so anyway that's really good go lewis um apparently he's god right now i don't know what the fuck's going on but uh, you know what he needed? He needed his jump heavy slash to be bigger so he can get fucking crossed up. Thunderbird is actually a war crime. Let's see what they do. It now disappears when he takes damage. Does that does that mean chip damage? Making it more challenging to launch an aggressive approach. Okay, you actually have to think when you use it. But if I just FD, does it matter? Right? And it's like if I FD, then I you know I'll take more knockback from whatever. I don't. I think he's still gonna be fine. <laughs> Burn it down. Increase number of hits. Yeah. Um, go Lewis will still be Go Lewis. You will still add stagger effect on counter hit. Oh no! Why do he be sneaking shit in here? There is okay. So right now Eno's winning the patch. Eno's winning the patch right now. Jacko servants now fly higher and farther when hit with crouch slash. This makes it viable not only as a starting point for offense, but also in powerful strings, making use of the time difference before the attack hits. The changes to countdown launch on hit makes it easier for Jacko to go into a combo after blocking. The Explosion. Okay. Okay. Change the servant trajectory when hitting them with this attack. Dust attack. Hey, blah, blah, blah. Throw servant has a wall bounce effect. That's kind of fucking gross. Will now register input when the button is at release servant. Okay, so quality of life. And they want people to use countdown, which is probably not going to happen. Okay, but it's there. It's there. All right, you know, still one in the patch. Happy Chaos. Uh-oh. Is he, are they going to put him in the dirt? Jumping D now draws the opponent in, making it easier to lead into an advantageous situation for Chaos at close range. As, okay, quality of life. Four kick could be easily included in, in combos for any situation. It is extremely powerful in maintaining offense on block. The attack startup has been increased. You could throw a kick in the forward kick before. I'm guessing now you definitely can. It no longer consecutively hits consecutively from crowd check. So you can't do 2k, 6k, and it won't combo anymore. You have to do 5k, 6k. I gotta go see something. That's not making any sense. Because I'm pretty confident 2k and 5k have the same attack level. So something's not making any fucking sense right now. Shout outs to Dust Loop. Nope. So here's 5k attack level one where hills 2k yeah they're both the same attack level i don't know what the fuck this what what ooh. <laughs> i swear i'm not doing that on purpose okay <laughs> okay so wait i don't understand it no longer hits i don't think he can do 5k 6k anymore or 2k 6k anymore i don't understand what they're doing uh oh he may be he may be uh in bit of trouble a bit a wee bit of trouble a wee bit of trouble let me lower this just a bit all right cool uh at the ready reduced recover okay cancel aim can now be activated that's so good finally now reduces tension balance now increases negative value okay so this this jump the fort the kick change may actually be a fucking issue um and the tension things were just normal he's i think he's been normalized i think he's playing guilty gears drive now it's really really good viking refuses to play guilty gears drive though viking is more of a threat at close range now as she can more easily follow up on cross up yozans in the mix up by expanding the hitbox of the explosion part of kenju it now functions as a poke and in combos what the hell is that oh the gun the blick okay Oh shit, what? You can just spam to Tommy Geish now? Viking stop five. Viking stop five. It's art. It's over. It's actually over. It's at Viking's best character in the game. 
Okay, I take that back. Baikin's on five though. Okay, Eno and Baikin. Eno, Baikin, and Go Lewis. Like these, these, they're about to kick Ram, Happy Cows, and uh, Nago out. There's gonna be a new top three, top five. There's gonna be a new top three, top five. I cannot believe they did what I just fucking saw. You have got to be fucking shitting me. I want to see what this does. I'm gonna see what this does. Is it my time? Because I was playing, and I was like, bro, I think this character is fucking stupid. Anyway, Testament, the brink of top tier. What are they gonna do? Graveyard can now be used back to back. Yeah. Okay. So this is the bullshit. So they just want you to play. You have to buy the DLC characters. <laughs> you actually have to buy the DLC characters now. That or play Kai Kiske. You you choose. Um, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Are they gonna sneak some shit in here too? Reduce knock, knockback of the strike part, bro. What the fuck is this wording? Increased active frames, down draw, bro. What are you doing? I'm a, I'm a testament main now, just so you know. Just so you know. This is insane. I'm a, I'm a testament main. Uh, the only character that's interesting, I guess, Bridget. Bridget more has I'm a, okay. So Bridget's only issue, by the way, has always been not enough damage. Bridget has more, but since everyone's doing less damage, she now indirectly, you know. She's doing more damage, right? She's on par with everybody else. Bridge has more opportunities to launch her offense from neutral due to the increased projectile speed and reduced recovery for stop and dash. That's the yo-yo. She has more potent options available after rolling movement connects. Now, to be clear, rolling movement is when she does the... She gets on the, the skate. She starts skating, right? And then she fucking does kick. If that's what I think, then she's actually rolling movement. Kick start my heart. Shoot. Okay. Never mind. They're talking about this. It's my ball. Oh, God. I swear to God, I'm not <laughs> Bro, I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> okay. Stop and dash. Increase descent speed on hero block. Fix a bug. Okay, that's actually really good. So our combo structure is going to be more consistent. Okay. Okay, super does more damage. Yes, this is good. These are all good changes. This is all good. This is all really good. I actually think I actually think Bridge is cracked. And the reduced recovery means I think they're out of control. I need to go talk to the boy. It's time. Sing Keys K. There are no character specific. Yeah, they normally do this. Yeah, because he just came out literally like two weeks, three weeks ago, right? Like, this is totally fine. Okay, so here's the reality. I thought this patch is gonna be huge. It only took me 30 minutes, usually takes me two hours. Um, there's not enough sauce here for, if I'm not, if I wasn't already a dedicated guilty gear, if I was one of the people who just kind of left, I don't see a reason why I would come back. Um, but it's less a character I came out I really liked. This is not a new game. This is just the same game we've been playing for the last six fucking months or whatever length of time we've been playing it. It's just that the fucking gods have been brought down to earth and new gods will rise. And if you're not part of the, you know, the new, the new party of gods, I guess, whatever. Now, the biggest win for this patch is crossplay and the ability to like decline matches if people have terrible fucking internet or they have bad connection to you. That's really, really nice. The winners of the patch are definitely Biken, Testament, Bridget, Eno. I don't think anyone else did anything that matters. There's some, some sus stuff going on here. Clearly things that we'll have to take a look at. Thank God for Rufo Monger. That man does great visual guides. I'll keep him. Let him be in charge of that good stuff. Um, we're playing the same game, it looks like, for the rest of 2022 and 2023. Only question is, what new players will rise as these new characters rise to the top? Um, I'm not particularly excited to play anyone. I played everyone enough. <laughs> um, and I'm pretty confident... There's no new problems I need to solve. And there's no form of expression I haven't expressed that I want to express. So I guess, well, I guess I'll keep playing. I guess I'll keep playing Zotto, but there's no like new character. No new character was born. I think Eno may be the Messiah, but Eno is just Eno. But anyway, I'm rambling on about things beyond this patch. As soon as I get my hands on it, you guys will um, know if, what I think. I'll probably put something in the community tab. So be sure to subscribe so you can see that. 
as soon as possible. But that is it for this one, guys. I wanted to keep this one as short as possible. Y'all have a great rest of the night. Let me know what y'all think in down in the comments, actually. And y'all have a good rest of the night.